his life, invested in your life. Thank you. God bless you. You can see you. If you are a student or a graduate of Anchor Christian School, would you say that? Or a teacher, former teacher, faculty member, administrator. <clears throat> wow. What a, another part of his legacy. Thank you so much. God bless you. You may see you. If you consider yourself to be part of the swordsmen, that's men and women that God has called into full-time Christian ministry out of Brother Richard's ministry, maybe pre-Lindale, as Brother Lindell mentioned a moment ago. But if you would consider yourself to be part of the swordsman, would you please stand? Again, wow, what a marvelous legacy. Thank you, you may be seated. If you're a preacher, you knew Brother Richard. Maybe you did, but you're a preacher anyway. Would you stand? His life has had an influence in all of our lives. And we thank the Lord for him. Thank you for being Now, if you love Jesus and you're ready to stand and stretch, would you stand? <laughs> as we stand and stretch for just a moment, in a moment, Carol Peter is going to sing the healer. It's a song that Brother Richard had never heard until Carol came to Glendale a number of years ago now, and sang this song, and he had specifically asked that she sing it. And then Brother Lonnie Mattingly, who was on staff here back in the late, late 1960s and early 1970s, and then went to the Great Shawnee Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, and served there for so many years. Brother Lonnie's going to come and share a funeral sermon with us. But before Carol sings, before we're seated, I want to read one verse out of the third John. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. I was ordained to the ministry here, and Brother Richard, as he laid his hands on my head, he didn't say much. I don't remember what all he said, but it was fairly brief. But what stood out was, I pray for you that you will remain morally pure and doctrinally straight all the days of your life. And I charge and lay upon you that same prayer, that your life will manifest moral purity and doctrinal fidelity to the great truths of Scripture, the faith once and all delivered to the saints. And as we've heard already so many times, encapsulated in the person of Jesus Christ, who we know, love, honor, and serve. Thank you, God bless you. Thanks.
I, I think you can hear me. And uh, I like to have, I, I like to use all of my hands when I preach, and I only have two of them. And, you know, if evolution had been real, maybe I'd have kept my tail like that, you know. But, uh, they say man lost his tail because he had no meat for it. And I said, well, that's a lie. They've never seen a mama trying to get in the door with the baby in a bag of groceries. <laughs> Well, it's a joy to be here, not the joy of knowing that we'll not see our loved one on this side anymore, but the joy of just celebrating his life, the joy of knowing we will see him again. What a wonderful, wonderful man, what a dear friend. I, honestly, I feel a little bit like John Martin going to say something about the Apostle Paul. You know, it's kind of humiliating. And uh, someone said, you're nervous preaching in front of all those preachers and all those dignitaries, high-ranking officials, and all that kind of stuff. I said, that's not what makes me nervous. What really makes me nervous is I really want to honor Brother Richard. That, that's the real thing. And I want to please the Lord. And uh, this morning, if you take your Bibles and look in John chapter 15 just for a minute. I, I won't be a long time, I promise you that. I, uh, I learned a long time ago that the mind cannot absorb more than the seed can endure. You've endured quite a bit, and I appreciate that very much. And matter of fact, just so that I could sympathize with you, I probably shouldn't say this, Brother Richard would really, he'd be having a conference with me, but I, I drank an extra bottle of water before I came in here just so I could be on the same page with him. <laughs> In John chapter 15, beginning in verse 5, I'm thinking about Brother Richard now. I want you to, I want you to make this connection. Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Amen. You know what? That word abide doesn't mean to visit occasionally. It means to take up residence. I believe Brother Richard Oldham took up residence. Amen with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, once you've invited him in, he's with you. He promised never to leave. Well, boy, sometimes we have a tough time abiding with him. Someone asked me, what do you think from the Richard's secret? How is it that he was so perceptive? How, how is it that he seemed... I, I, I told somebody, please don't misunderstand me. I don't mean this in some kind of like worship a man type uh, way. But I said, Brother Richard was a little bit above us. We don't, we can't really understand the level that he lived. It, it was different. That might, you know, and the ministry God gave him. God gave him a ministry of sending. I, I'm not sure that he ever really fully understood that. How church members that he would pour his life into, and then they'd go off and serve in another church. Young people that grew up, and, and he trained them and mentored them, and thought, boy, this is going to be my next staff member, and they'd go take a position somewhere. And that ministry of sending and over and over and over again that was reproduced. It's amazing. But part of it was, I think, how you can live on that level, it's probably available to us too if we would just be willing to pay the same price. But he said, he said, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If a man Abide not in me, is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, men gather them, cast them into the fire, and they're burned. That's talking about folks who never trusted Christ. But then listen to verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. Do you hear how much Brother Richard emphasized this thing of getting the word of God into these young people? If ye abide in me, and my word abide in you. This is what he said. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Isn't that amazing? I thought about Brother Richard a little further. No one's mentioned the fact yet that Brother Richard was never married. I was thinking about that a little bit. And I was thinking, you know, here, Glendale Baptist Church never had a pastor's wife. What do you think of that? You lucky dogs. No, it's just <laughs> Verse Corinthians 7, 32, 
do he that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. Isn't that Brother Richard? 1 Corinthians chapter 33 says, But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Now, for most of you preachers, as in my case, my wife has been an unbelievable asset to my ministry. She's kind of kept me in line a little bit. And uh, been a great help. But in Brother Richard's case, he was one of those who chose to be unique for the sake of the cause of Christ. And I believe that sacrifice, that commitment of his whole life, he was, he was part of the bride of Christ. But in one sense of the word, he was married to the bride as well. Glendale well, Baptist Church was his family, his life. And that's just an amazing thing. Now, I just said that's a little preliminary. Brother Richard, who, who was he? At least in my thoughts, he was a lover of God, a teacher, a soul winner, a friend, and a mentor. He was a channel. I don't mean this in a, in a mystical or a kind of way, but he was a channel of blessing. I mean, God literally used him in our lives. He saw the potential in a person and then gave his life to developing the other person's potential for Christ. He was a man of prayer, a man of the book, a man of faith in God. This way, here's what he did. He loved us. He set the standard for us. That's why we sometimes even up until these very last days would change something about our own person before we would visit him. Hello? Isn't that amazing? Personally. He said the standard part. He was an amazing preacher of God's word and gave us a living example of what he preached. He practiced what he preached. His life itself was, was a, a walking sermon. What an amazing man. Today, that man that gave his life to the service of the Lord Jesus Christ more than any man I have ever known, having, having preceded us to heaven left some specific instructions, even concerning his own funeral. He said, what's Brother Lonnie Mattingly doing up there? Because that's what Brother Richard said. <laughs> that's the only reason I'm here. <laughs> Last man standing. <laughs> and uh, Brother Richard, you see, if that's what he wants, then that's what I'm going to do. I, I, when I worked for Brother Richard, I said, he's my pastor, and my goal is to serve him as he serves the Lord, we serve God together. And whatever he says, I'm going to give my very best to try to accomplish it. And uh, he even gave instructions what he wants me to preach. <laughs> so if you don't like this, just talk to him. <laughs> Brother Richard taught me more about walking with and serving God than anyone I know. During the years I spent working with him, he always had, I assisted in every wedding he had while I was here on the staff. I assisted in that wedding in some way or another. Every funeral, every deacon's meeting, every financial meeting, every, I mean, you name it, involved. It was, it was like, it was like the greatest seminary in the world. There's no way you can learn better how to do it. And God just, just blessed it. I took it all to heart. Many times at a funeral service, Brother Richard would preach a sermon. Not every time, but many times. But almost every sermon, he would include this passage. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself that where I am. There you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way, you know. You know, heaven is a wonderful place. It's a prepared place. Heaven's a prepared place. Over in Revelation 21 and 22, some of Brother Richard's favorite scriptures, scriptures he used over and over, talk about that wonderful place uh, called heaven in chapter 21. Talks how God, 
God himself is going to be there and wipe away every tear. No more tears in heaven. No more death. No more crying. No, no sorrow. You know the passages. Heaven's a wonderful place. It's not really all about the streets of gold and the tree of life and the river of life. All those things and wonderful they are and, and his servants will serve him. And what a place, heaven. What, what glory, what joy. But my friend, that's where we're going to see our loved ones and Jesus is there. Face to face with Christ our Savior. Heaven's a prepared place. Brother Richard, don't step out into some white light to some unknown he stepped into the presence of the Savior in the city of gold in a place that was prepared especially for him. Amen. Heaven, a prepared place. But you know what? It's for prepared people. The last verse 6 that I didn't quote, Jesus said, or Peter, I, I'm sorry, I, Thomas said to him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, God, we know the way. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus said, there's only one way to heaven. Brother Richard said, in, in essence, he said, he didn't say this to me personally, he didn't write it down, I don't think, but in essence, he said, I want the gospel given. He did say that. He said, I don't want anybody to leave that room without knowing how to be sure they're going to heaven. I don't want anybody to come and honor me at my funeral and then never see me again. How do you get to heaven? Well, we have to understand that number one, we don't, we're not going because we deserve to go. The Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us. And the glory of God was revealed to us in His glorious Son, Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ were standing right here today alongside me, I hope that some of you that know me, you might say He's a pretty decent person, but it would shake your heartbeat to say He's nothing like Jesus. Even if Brother Richard were standing here today, he'd say that same thing. And if one by one we called each one here to stand alongside the Savior, we've come short of the glory of God. We've missed the mark. We've fallen short. We're sinners. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. If we got our just reward because we're sinners, we would face death. Not just physical death, not just, not just the grave, not just eternity without God, but the Bible talks about the second death. When it says the wages of sin is death, it's talking about the second death. I heard a preacher say one time, if you're born only uh, once, you die twice. But if you get born again, you only die once. That's second death. The Bible says death and hell in Revelation chapter 20 was cast into the, into, was cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into that lake of fire. Think of that. Number one, we're sinners. Number two, there's a payment for sin, and the wages of sin is death. You say, preacher, I just don't think God would send anybody there. God, God did everything that he was able to do to provide for you. He substitute. He sent his only begotten son to die in your place. The Bible says God proved his love toward us. God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He paid that death penalty that we deserve. Think of that. You're, those of you who are sitting in this room saved today know that you have a home in heaven. It wasn't, it wasn't free to him. Someone said, well, that's just too easy. That, that's too cheap. What, what do you mean? God had to give his son. Jesus paid the ultimate price. The son of God left heaven's glory and came to this glory on earth. Lived a perfect, sinless life the God-man, the only one that ever deserved heaven, Amen. took your hell and mine when he died in our place. We're sinners. There's a payment for sin. God loved us and sent his son to make that payment for us. He said if we're willing to believe him, and if we're genuinely sorry for our sin, and if we really want to be saved, he said, if you'll come to me, he says, like this, he that cometh to me, I will no longer cast out. Jesus said, I will not turn you away. In Romans 10, 13, it says it like this, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And as well, the figures are known 
people say these days, period. Whosoever, that's you, that's me. If you haven't received Christ as your Savior, today would be a wonderful day to settle that matter. There's a second thing that Brother Richard wanted me to talk about. And that was to give a challenge that there may be someone in this room today that God is going to deal with your heart or is dealing with your heart about serving Him in full-time Christian service and you've never surrendered your life to Christ. It just may be that you're the one. It just may be that there's something stirring in your heart right now as you heard these people one by one get their testimonies and talk about the dealing of God in their life and you're thinking, you know, maybe I've missed it. Maybe I've gotten too caught up in the material, the things of this world, and haven't really focused on God's will for my life. The Bible says in Romans 10, 14, that, you know, we're supposed to tell everybody, but it says, how, they, how, they, how shall they hear, or how shall they call on him in whom they've not believed, and how shall they believe in him in whom they've not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher? God's already given us a ministry. If you're saved, you were reconciled to God by Jesus Christ. And He reconciled you, and then He gave you the ministry of reconciliation, the Bible says. And then He gave us the tools to use to, to carry out that ministry. He gave us the word of reconciliation. Then He gave us the title. Now then, ye are ambassadors for Christ. Every one of us have a responsibility. But for some, it goes a step further. God said, I want you in a very special way to serve me the rest of your life as a full time servant of Jesus Christ. I was amazed to see how many men and women in this room had surrendered their life to full time service, how many are serving in London long, even to this day. It's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Don't miss it. The greatest life in the world is the life in the center of the love of God. Brother Richard had an obvious love for and a calling to reach and to train young people for the cause of Christ. Just a partial list of the things that he implemented. His Sunday school, his, uh, the children's church, the vacation Bible school, the bus ministry, Anchor Christian School, the golden chariot that ran up on the college campus and picked up college students. And, and uh, the campus Bible studies and teen time and youth teams and camp joy Bible conference and Royal Ranch and somebody says, why, why is he in this teen time? There's probably about 10 people out there listening to it. He didn't have teen time for the 10 people out there listening. He had 10 teen time because he knew his preacher boys needed a place to preach. He put them out of that mind. They, they could preach till the music started. <laughs> He knew their capabilities, so it usually started in about three minutes. <laughs> that was his life. Brother Richard lived and died. You know what he said? He said, I want my ministry and my life to end on the same day. He said, Preacher, that's what happened. I'm sorry, Brother Richard. Your life, humanly speaking, has ended. The ministry goes on. The ministry just goes on. I want us to bow our heads for a moment, please. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed. With Christ right here with us, He said, We're two or three together, together in my name. I'm there in the midst of them. He's here today. I have a sermon to preach. Jesus is in my house. He's here right now. I wonder if there's anyone in this. This great room. By the way, we have some personal workers here that are, are assigned to maybe if you want to talk to someone privately and individually about any matter, about salvation, about the call of ministry, that they're willing to do that. And I wonder, would you personal workers, would you just stand up just a minute wherever you are? Just stand up a moment. Those who are going to serve, help us with the personal work, just stand up. I want to there. I see two ladies here. Anyone else? Would you just stand up? Here's brother right here. <coughs> Now, I want us to just, with our heads back, 
no one on the thing, not even the Christian workers. I'll just look at myself. I don't, I don't know how to pray. I wonder who's here tonight or this afternoon. You said, Brother Lonnie, I'm really not 100% sure that I have a home in heaven when I die. I want to. I don't want to die without Christ. I know I'm a sinner. I know I need a Savior. Pray for me. Is there anyone like that? Would you slip it down the door? Just slip it up the door where I can see it. In the bathroom, in one way. Here on this lower level, young person, senior adult. And I've known people that played in church all their life in their heart of hearts. They were having a battle every day, and I'm really sure they were sick. Anyone know? Just slip your hand up where you can see it. Take it right back down. Just slip it up a little bit. God bless you. Now we ask you to do this. I wonder who's here today. You'd say, no lie. I believe God wants me to do full time Christian service. I want to serve him. I've never really officially, formally surrendered. I, I'm not going to give a public invitation. We, we've been here a, a while now already. We've still got some things to do in the exiting and so forth. But I'd like to know who you are and pray for you. You see, Brother Lonnie, pray for me. I've never surrendered my life to full-time service, but I believe God's dealing with my heart. I'd like to pray with somebody about it. Pray for me. Would you slip your hand up where I can see it? Just slip it up there a moment. God bless you. God bless you. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray for you. And I, you saw those people who stood, and if you'll just seek them out, just seek them out. And let us help you. If you can't find one of them, come to me. Or come to Brother Sam. And we'll, we'll direct you to someone who can talk with you privately and pray with you and help you with those matters. Being saved, follow the full time service. I'm going to ask one last question. I wonder who's here today. You say, Brother Lonnie, the truth of the matter is, I know there's some things about my life that I would be embarrassed and ashamed because I've really kind of dipped myself. And if I had to face Brother Richard, I'd be ashamed. But even more important than that, I don't believe Jesus is really pleased with me. I'm not satisfied that God's not pleased. And I would really like to use this as a, a mark on the calendar, a red letter day in my life, where I turn things around and serve the Lord more wholeheartedly, become more effective, to load, my, load myself up with tracts and pamphlets and try to be sure I talk to somebody every day about the Lord. Pray me. I know I'm not where I need to be. I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. I know I'm not where I need to be. Pray for me. Would you slip hand or slip it there? Yes, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So we receive you. Would you let God help you with that? Would you believe him to do it? What if I may have like myself? I said, Preacher, I've got some loved ones, friends, neighbors. They're not related to me. Some of them may be lost or they just may be away from God. I'm not even sure what it is, but I know they need the Lord. And if God would help me, I'm going to make another effort. Maybe make it. Or I'm going to try to reach them for Christ. I'm not going to give up on them. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw them away like a piece of trash. I'm going to love them. I'm going to reach out to them. I'm going to try to reach them for Christ. I have somebody like that in my heart. How many would say that again? Slip your hand up there. Oh my, all over the room. Wow, that's enough people. Thank you for taking that. That's enough people if we all did it. Revival might break out. Heavenly Father, you know our hearts. You know the need. You see my hands. You know the hearts of the good stir. Lord, thank you for the testimony of Brother Richard Oakley. Thank you, Lord, for his life of faith and commitment and self-denial and his investment that he's made in so many. Lord, help us to just ensure that that investment he made and certainly the investment that the Lord Jesus Christ has made will not be in vain. It will be faithful unto him. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand together.
this man of God. Our heart's desire and prayer is that you would know of Jesus. If you do not, we saw some personal workers and preachers and others around me glad to share with you about Christ. We hope that you'll settle in your heart before you leave this room today. The wonderful members of Glendale Baptist Church, accompanied by many of the members of the Edmund Christian School family, have prepared a meal that is going to be served for everyone who's able to stay. It's going to be at the Edmund Christian School. I actually forgot to. Is it on Cape Hill Road? Yeah. Okay, on Cape Hill Road, out past the mall, and turn to the right. And you know, I can come and participate in that meeting. Thank you so much. Also, we have several exits that we take, but right out the door where Brother Richard is so accustomed to stand and greet people at the end of the service. The casket is there, and you're able to go by and to share. Like to go by and ask, pass by and get the last respect. Feel free to do that. Then we couldn't close without the way we close teen time every Sunday night for 54 years. If you'll turn toward the cross, and we're going to sing together the chorus, but until then. But until 